gonna be bringing uh, what I solely asked her to bring. I remember <laughs> I woke up one day and I said, thinking to myself, you're just so grumpy. <laughs> There's gotta be something wrong with you. So I texted Debbie <laughs> and I said, Debbie, can you bring Grand Communion or something? <laughs> Asking, which I know some amount about the Catholic Church, but not a lot. And Debbie says, well, I'm out doing stuff, but I'll come over and bring beers later. <laughs> and it was so funny because here I am thinking Graham's on her deathbed and Debbie is supplementing with beers. <laughs> phenomenal you know and I will say that my my grandma would kill me if she saw that last photo with all these pictures of her and all these beers I'm not an alcoholic I don't drink that much but she didn't she really didn't but she loved to socially drink and that's why I put the cheers there uh, so cheers to her does anyone else want to speak My sister wants to speak, so here we go. Oh no. My grandma was literally my best friend, so I don't know, but other than the fact that she was so grumpy all the time, if I didn't do what she asked, like literally at the step of her finger, but I don't know, but other than so the last time I was in the hospital with Graham, all she wanted to do was go drink beer with all of her Langan family and like hang out to the deep, literally. And so she was home for a couple days when we got out of Riverbend and we went to What's that bar called? The, the Blue, actually no, it was called the Freeloader. We went to the Freeloader and we gambled like almost all of her money. Like <laughs> swear to God, literally almost all of her money. And she was so satisfied and we came home the next day and she was so sore. But that was what Graham was about, honestly. And she loved all of us. And every time she gambled, she would say someone's name, like Kai's or Grace or Braylon's or any of her grandchildren's names. She'd be like, I want to win for these people. And sometimes we wouldn't, sometimes we wouldn't. But most of the time we wouldn't. So <laughs> we gambled for nobody, but we tried in the end. But yeah. She was literally my best friend, and I hope everyone's enjoy her drunken company and everything that she can bring us. So I hope everyone can enjoy their food and drinks on her. I will tag team Mariah's description. <laughs> so the last time Graham went to gamble, which if anybody knows Agnes Langham, she's feeling lucky. <laughs> she's in it to win it. You know, even if she's down for the count, she's gonna try till the last set she planned, and then it's done. It's all over with. It's not worth it anymore. But uh, I've been asking her, oh, you wanna go to your doctor? We could stop after the doctor. We can gamble. <laughs> Oh no, I'm on antibiotics. I'm on antibiotics. And I said, do antibiotics stop you from gambling? <laughs> so I convinced her a couple times. But the last time she gambled was with my sister and I envy her for it. Because Mariah 
sent me a picture and said, me and Graham are going out. <laughs> and they went just straight down to the freeloader, which if you're local to Salem, you know where it's at. It's a dive. It smells funny. The bartenders are great. I mean, they know me by name. <laughs> but uh, they went in there and they lost everything they spent. I mean, there was they didn't come out with shit. And they got home and Graham said, well, you know what I did today? And she told me all about all what she what what the numbers were, what the lines were. She was so excited, and you could tell that in that conversation she could see the light and everything. And I, the last day that she was alive, I remember telling her, "It's okay, you know. All of us love you. We're not going to be mad at you. Like you, you struggled for a long time, and we love you." And. Um, find a place to comfort yourself and that's really at the end of the day what matters it's she was here for us for the time that she could be and that's what it matters i remember her as such a phenomenal person like that when i was uh, i didn't know i was pregnant and i was throwing up in the bathroom and i was like probably three in the morning and I had to clock on for my shift at Dutch Bros at 4.30, which is about five minutes from here, it's not far, so I could, I could slum my way to get to my shift and look good, feel good, do whatever, in an hour of waking up. And she looked at me and she said, are you sure you're not pregnant? And at that moment, I realized that my grandma was probably right. I'm sure shit, she was. You know, and, and we spent a lot of time together after that and obviously before that. But I know she touched a lot of people's hearts. Um, I will say one last time, is there anyone else that wants to share something? Miss Cindy would love to. If I can make it. You got it. And you are Heather because I can't see you. You got it. Okay, do I have to push a button? No, nope, you nope. just go ahead and hold it up. I just want to tell you guys one fond memory I have. A little bit higher. When my, when we were in South Dakota and my aunt was at the Indian Reservation in Pinewood, we go down and see her, and she'd always cheer you up or you know say something good or nice to you. But she was a very loving person. I know she was Danny. She cared for you guys very much, and. She always told me, remember the Langan motto, beer is a beverage, it's not alcohol. Did everybody hear that? Beer is a beverage, not a motto. Beer is a motto. Beer is a beverage, not alcohol. <laughs> Don't listen to me. <laughs> all right, we're going to sing now. Thank you all for coming. Here's a motto, not a